Not a single plant in our real world lives forever, but in this fantasy universe, there is one. These mildly creepy trees called weirwoods. They live on forever if left untouched by man's poisonous hands. Not only do they live forever, but the branches, even after being cut off from the tree, will never rot. Give this wood to any crafter, and you get some of the strongest and most expensive material gold can buy. The Three-Eyed Raven used a weirwood bow in his youth, a hundred years back. And a bunch of notable places use this wood for construction or furniture. A certain Stark bastard in the past even believed weirwood arrows could be strong enough to penetrate the scales of a dragon and take one out. Trimming off a few branches here and there is fine and all. But things took a sad turn in this fake history when the first people who migrated over to Westeros began cutting them down in mass numbers. The weirwood trees may be considered sacred to the current followers of the old gods, mostly northerners and wildlings, but the children of the forest believe these immortal trees that they carved faces on were actually gods. This kicked off thousands of years of fighting between the two species, a fight the children could never win. They may have longer lifespans and be more in tune with magic, but just couldn't keep up with the human reproductive rate. So almost every single weirwood within the Seven Kingdoms was cut down to make room for castles and towns or whatever. But the ones still standing are ancient, older than anything in this expansive timeline. They were ancient 12,000 years in the past, where all this lore kicks off, with the children of forest roaming the vast and empty continent with the giants, before man crossed over from Essos. Barbaric savages cut them all down without even considering to replant with seeds. Bunch of dumb chimps with axes. Kind of reminds me of the hunting situation when European settlers almost completely wiped out bison in North America out of greed. Apes could have just farmed them. Coincidentally, the only immortal plant species in this world is also a magical surveillance camera. But not so much a coincidence. Whenever the children of the forest noticed these trees weren't naturally falling and dying, they must have started their magical experiments. With some of them having green sight, visions most likely show them the power of the weirwood. Just not enough power to block an axe swing or run from a forest fire. So how are they still standing after all this time? Three possibilities here, because the answer isn't directly given to us readers, and you damn well know it wasn't in the show. The three possibilities for this phenomenon I could come up with are the children of the forest had it right, and the weirwoods are gods. Two, this is just a fantastical characteristic of this form of plant life, nothing deeper. Three, the theory I've been trying to piece together, there's some life energy transferring going on deep within the roots. Might be a symbiotic relationship between the weirwoods and children. The children aren't buried or cremated after they die. Instead, their ritual is to become one with the tree. A major development the show writers decided to leave out was a thread raven being intertwined with a weirwood while still lingering on to his life. Way past the age any normal human should live. He's about 125 years old in the current story when we last left him, in that cave with presumably the last few children of the forest left in the world. He's one of the most powerful and influential characters in this lore, with his green sight and skin changing abilities. But at the cost of being born frail with a lower life expectancy to keep things in balance. No longer needing nourishment from food or water, the Thread Raven is alive, yes, but barely. He only has energy to stay awake for a few moments a day, then he returns to his dreams. All the while, the deep roots of his weirwood throne absorb him. There are branches literally growing through his body. His exposed eye socket has one poking through. Before his draining with Bran could begin, he says. Only the trees remember. His voice was so soft that Bran had to strain to hear. Most of him has gone into the tree, explained the singer Mira called Leaf. He had lived his mortal span, and yet he lingers. For us. For you. For the realms of men. Only a little strength remains in his flesh. He has a thousand eyes and one, but there is much to watch. One day, you will know. This form of life support may be a give and take relationship since the root of the tree is slowly absorbing the flesh, the bones, and whatever else. It may not be a coincidence that weirwoods have red sap and appear to bleed when cut. The Three-Eyed Raven isn't the only one being absorbed by a weirwood. Every single one of the children of the forest grow through this custom at the end of their life. Bran witnesses this in the same cave. The rest that are intertwined have even less life in them. After the process is complete and the ones attached to a tree are no longer alive, the children believe they join that godhood. If this theory does become part of the story, all those weirwoods cut by man would be an even more heinous act, straight up defiling graves. The first men were convinced to stop chopping them down and even adopt to the children's religion, following the old gods. But the second wave of humans finished the job with no time for negotiations. 
One group of people completely out of the loop are the Ironborn. I believe it's the only location on Westeros that can't grow any weirwood because their weak soil just sucks. A piece of lore from this region does give us a little more insight on this topic somehow. There's a legend spread here that a demon tree once existed that would feed on humans. This demon tree is described as having pale white wood. One raider from the Iron Islands must have saw something spooky on the shores of the main continent. There's also the old tradition of hanging the entrails of the condemned on the branches of weirwood. Could be something to help my point of the trees absorbing nutrients and extending their own life drastically like a Venus flytrap. Except the ones eaten are volunteers. As cool as it would be for the symbiotic relationship to be the cause of the weirwoods living on forever, there really isn't enough dialogue with the Thread Raven just yet for me to even convince myself. He makes his grand entrance in the last book that came out, spews a couple sentences of knowledge to Bran, and then we don't get another chapter with him for the rest of the book. I'm also not convinced that the trees themselves are gods. If all it takes is a sharp blade or a torch to bring down your god, you might as well start worshipping the seas. It could take a lot more of a beating. The weirwoods are also susceptible to poisoning, because there is a dead mass of weirwood still standing in the riverlands that was poisoned. Even Melisandre can take a little poison and walk it off. In the godswood of House Blackwood, their tree is poisoned by their nearby family rivals. This is another tie-in to the Thread Raven, because this house is where his lady mother reigns from. Having fantastical properties is likely the only solid answer we'll ever get out of the story, unless Bran has a bunch of much needed POV chapters in the next book. This world is filled with magic and every fantasy needs magical trees to be a part of the club. Their description in the last book made the Weirwoods out to be ancient wizards full of knowledge and power, just like the Three-Eyed Raven. Time is different for a tree than for a man. Sun and soil and water, these are the things a Weirwood understands, not days and years and centuries. For men, time is a river. We are trapped in this flow, hurling from past to present, always in the same direction. The lives of trees are different. They root and grow in one place, and that river does not move. The oak is the acorn, the acorn is the oak, and the weirwood, a thousand human years are a moment to a weirwood. And through such gates, you and I may gaze into the past. Certain moths live their whole lives in a day. Yet to them, that little span of time must seem as long as years and decades to us. An oak may live 300 years, a redwood, 3,000. A weirwood will live forever if left undisturbed. To them, seasons pass in the flutter of a moth's wing, and past, present, and future are one. I don't think George Martin will ever give a definitive answer about the legitimacy of gods, because there's so many different religions in this world. Validifying one would directly challenge the other beliefs, claiming to be the one true religion. Just classifying weirwoods as magical beings is the safe bet. Bran has started eating the paste from weirwood seeds to awaken his green seer abilities. So it'll be interesting to see if it has any other effects, or if he'll soon be intertwined with one of his own. He doesn't have much need for travel with his legs no longer of use, and he can easily skin change or communicate with others through dreams. It's already been hinted that he'll outlive everyone around him. He'll need a weirwood for that to come to fruition. Hold on. Take me to the tree. If any of you guys have any other theories, I'll hear you out in the comments. Talking about Brendan Rivers and his transition into the Three-Eyed Raven in my last video made me want to make this one, so I'll leave a link to that on your screen now. I'm out. See y'all later.